Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as usual, let's go over the market. Let's go over Tesla. Let us discuss what has happened so far and what we can expect moving forward. And yeah, pretty wild day and wild week for the most part. And it's not over yet because uh, as I'm sure you guys can... Today's Thursday, right? Let me just double check. Sometimes I get the days all mixed up. It is Thursday. So uh, yeah, tomorrow's also a pretty wild day because we have the three, uh, three major banks, one of them being JP Morgan, uh, reporting earnings, which can definitely dictate kind of the state of the economy, if that makes sense, uh, overall, right? Because, I mean, it's the banks. Um, with all that being said, you know, that, that can potentially affect things. But, you know, we got CPI yesterday. We got PPI to get to today. We got the FOMC minutes yesterday. So I would say the vast majority of the turbulence is done. We just have one more final day before, of course, the following one being earnings on Wednesday next week. But all that being said, let's take it all into account. Let's put it all in one package and figure out what the hell it all means for Tesla stock moving forward. So as usual, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Make your own research. Do your own decisions, whatever. But moving into a Tesla, pretty much closing the day uh, up uh, 3%, we'll just say, uh, putting us at just barely shy of $186. So, so you can see, this rectangle is there for a reason, right? So we came up once again to this rectangle, similar to how we did on these two candles over here, or oh, especially this one, maybe not as, as much as this one, but def definitely this one. And we're just getting rejected at the top of this little very long rectangle that I have drawn right here. So, you know, that's, that's unfortunate, right? You definitely want to see it pushed above, you know, this 186-ish level pretty important stuff right as you can see like for instance this daily candle when it did go above it right it act at this now it acted as a support it came down bounced off of it and went back up and then still ended up above it right and vice versa here now it came up to it this time acting as a resistance again and now we're ending below it however with that being said we did discuss yesterday how even though we had an absolutely quite a red candle no honesty on the daily yesterday i was saying that you know i am definitely more again i want to make it clear short term very short term bullish than bearish on tesla and you know here we have a nice solid respectable three percent day and like i said the main catalyst was the fact that as long as either a tesla just doesn't gap below 180 and just opens up even above 180 and holds fantastic that to me bullish that's that was this thing that played out or if it does end up or if it does end up gapping down below 180 because of maybe poor ppi numbers which they weren't by the way for the most part um that as long as it regains that 180 level within the hour, fantastic. Clearly, we went with option A. Again, TLDR, though, as long as we maintain the 180 mark, which is exactly what happened. And you can see we had a beautiful move. Now, what does it mean moving forward? So we have a pretty, like, strong inside day candle here, here which essentially just means that we traded within the range of yesterday's trading, uh, within the range of yesterday's trading range. Now, that usually means a sign of a reversal. But the problem here is that what's the reversal is the reversal up to go back up or is the reversal to go back? there's no like real crystal clear reversal here in my opinion so with that being said i personally just view it as nothing but more than indecision nothing more than that gen than just simple consolidation moving over to the bowling Andrew bands because right now to me this is probably the most important thing as of today so you can see that we have been essentially trading in this consolidation, but with some pretty, you know, violent movement for the most part, like, you know, here or all the way up here. Now we're essentially doing this, the same movement here, but just much, much, you know, less uh, sharp, if you will. And now, and then we rallied up similar to this, just also less sharp. So essentially we're just extremely stuck in this trading range. And I personally believe the $200 price target is looking a lot less likely. Let's just say that. Now, that doesn't mean that this, it can't reach it. You always have to op have an open mind for all these different possibilities, but I personally don't think we'll go up to 200. I think we'll maybe get, get close to it, maybe as high as 195 or something like that, but I can't imagine us going much higher than 190. I really do think that if we rally even more, which is very possible, I do think kind of that high 180 to 190, that general level, I think is going to be the main level that we will be essentially just sideways trading up until earnings i can't imagine or something crazy happens to the banks tomorrow that's again the, the final major catalyst in my opinion before the major major catalyst being of course tesla's earnings itself right so as long as nothing completely i don't know absolutely ridiculous and unexpected happens with the bank's earnings tomorrow morning i do believe that tesla will most likely just be trading sideways most likely just be hovering pretty much right around kind of you know this kind of 195 to sort of you know Kind of 180 like you know this overall level right here i do think we'll just be going sideways something like this just essentially getting tighter and tighter and tighter right that's usually how it happens right with consolidation phases right you get tighter 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 
before something finally gives, right? It finally explodes, it's like all that steam building up as a pressure underneath, you know, in the pot or whatever, right? Eventually, at some point, when you have no hole for the steam to get out, it will eventually find a way out, right? That's just kind of how it works. So this, to me, is kind of a similar thing right here, where you know we're just going to be going sideways. There's going to be a lot of momentum building up, and I think it's going to explode on earnings, uh, for better or for worse. Again, just. The thing with earnings is that it can throw off technical patterns, right? So if I had to look at it strictly through a technical, like, you know, technical perspective, if you will, I think it'll be to the downside. Doesn't mean it has to be. Absolutely not. But to me, just my opinion, I think there's a more likely chance that it will be to the downside than to the upside as earnings actually happens for Tesla next Wednesday, right? Mainly because like we talked about, you know, we have broken downwards from this upward trend, this blue line right here that we did find ourselves in since this uh, movement all the way back down to $100 all the way back here on the uh, in January. Wow, that was a long time ago, right? So we have broken down from that upward move, right? Even if you put it like this all the way, like as lenient as you possibly can, which is like this, even this is still arguably not arguably, quite literally have broken down, right? So just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, right? That is pretty important to consider. So the fact that we have broken down to me means that the uptrend has finished and now we are essentially getting ready for a downtrend back down to at the very least 166, if not most likely my major price target I've talked about several times being this kind of gap fill ish area anywhere really between 160 to as low as 145 that overall price range i think will be essentially another consolidation phase but i personally think will be also the accumulation phase but again that's just my opinion assuming nothing absolutely horribly happens to the market there's some people that are thinking spy will go all the way down to like 320 which is all the way down here can it yeah absolutely who knows honestly no one knows for sure will it i also don't know right but looking at SPY super quickly, you can see, you know, it is still technically setting up this head and shoulders pattern, which is pretty bearish. But this candle today does make things a little more confusing. It's starting to kind of, in my opinion, even throw off this pattern over here, right? Where this uh, head and shoulders pattern is really just not looking as valid to me anymore after today's movement because it just completely broke up. So I can imagine SPY most likely tomorrow even going up to probably like 415, 416, which if it does, that's most likely going to make uh, give Tessa room to probably come up to closer to the 190 mark, which we talked about, which is, of course, the median ish of the bullion your band again 189 190 something like that and i personally think that we'll just more, more or less consolidate on top of that the bull andrew band you can see is absolutely without question getting tighter and tighter and if we go to the 190 mark and just kind of consolidate around there and not really do a whole lot up until earnings it will continue getting tighter up until earnings happen and what does it mean when it gets tighter well, that's kind of my example earlier with the, you know, all that steam and pressure building up inside the pot that has no kind of, you know, hole to let the, you know, steam or air out, right? All that pressure out, right? It will essentially mean that the, the, the stock is about to make a, a, a pretty massive move, right? Similar to when, you know, it was tight right around right here, you know, got tight and then a massive move. Even right here, it was getting very tight very recently too, right? We got pretty tight over here, massive move to the downside. And now we're essentially getting, you know, quite tight once again. And I think there's still more room for tightness to happen. Same thing all the way over here, for instance, similar to the example I've talked about before, getting pretty tight and then it had a massive move, right? So just keep that in mind. That's usually what that means, right? It doesn't stay this tight for long and the longer and tighter it gets, and stays, the more explosive the move will be once it does come. And I promise you, it will. The only question is that, is it up or down? But like I said, I think it'll be more, uh, I think there's a more likely chance of it being down than up. Moving over to the 21 email, you can see it's still well above us, sitting pretty much at 189. Could be a you know, pretty damn decent resistance for the most part, right? We still have the 100 day moving average below us, which is going to, but I, 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 do, I definitely think we'll maybe hopefully find some support there if we do make this move to the downside. But with that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if we do break below it and ultimately head lower because, again, the main thing people look at is the 200-day moving average. If you're below that 200-day moving average, you're still in a bearish trend. And until the 200-day moving average can get, you know, meaningfully recaptured, the bearish trend is absolutely still very much alive, right? So just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. But that's kind of the main thing I am looking at as of right now. Taking a super quick look at TSLQ. So you can see it, it is actually getting a bit of a rejection around this line right here, which is not too surprising or shocking, right? So this line right here, right? Definitely finding some rejection in this area. And, you know, to me, that tells me that there is going to be a bit more room for downside for TSLQ. Q, which I think will be what Tesla needs TSLA to go up to about that 190 mark. 
which also coincides with me thinking SPY will most likely go up to around 415-ish, maybe 416 to retest this yellow line like I did over here. Just gonna do it one more time. SPY though, in all honesty, even with the R size, it's not looking that bad. It's not looking that bearish just yet. Like it's, it's you know, it's starting to kind of maybe show some signs of, you know, bearishness, but it's not looking that bad just yet. At least not as bad as tech. Like UQQ definitely looks more bearish than bullish in my opinion for me. SPY, kind of neutral maybe slightly more bullish than bearish if, if i could be completely honest which is just giving a lot of mixed signals because if spy is slightly more bearish than bullish or sorry bullish than bearish qqq is more bearish than bullish but spy is bullish it's conflict a lot of things are conflicting over there and then you have of course the vix which finally decided to pick a direction you can see absolutely got crushed just making its way down south which is great for the market which is why the market is roaring roaring and why i also think the market has more room to the upside because the vix is just showing some pretty serious signs of weakness but keep in mind the lower the vix goes the scarier it becomes to be a bull just keep that in mind at least in my opinion i think that's the case for, in my opinion, usually you want to buy when the VIX is high. You don't want to be, don't want to be buying when the VIX is this low. Just my opinion, though. But other than that, that's kind of what I'm seeing as of right now, ladies and gentlemen. All in all, I expect some overall consolidation and then a massive move will most likely happen for earnings or maybe even just before. Who knows? But it is definitely absolutely coming up very, very soon. But all that being said, thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Peace.